50% of the globe's economic development and 50% of the globe's population are going to be uh, is going to be added from from in the Asia Pacific region, which makes this the epicenter for the next hundred years of global growth. Uh, and the decisions that are made here are going to have an impact that transcend all else we've ever done in the past. Well, I think there's really one overriding uh, issue, and that is uh, there's a growing awareness of common purpose associated with the opportunity of harnessing the urbanization that's happening in Asia. Uh, this is a big topic with lots of stakeholders. If, if there's any lesson about globalization, it's it's not just it's companies have to deal with globalization, but cities are. Cities, unlike companies, can't move around the world. They're sitting still. And so they have to, they look at the problem of globalization different in terms of how do opportunities come to us, how do threats come to us. I think the, uh, in Asia, the urbanization take place at a very fast pace that nobody has ever seen before in the history. So uh, the big challenge is uh, there's not much experience you can learn from uh, Western uh, countries because it's so, it happens so fast right now. But if you don't find a good solution, you probably will repeat the same mistake that Western countries have. Asia as a, as a region, as a global region if you like, has a, a, an opportunity right now to actually lead the, the whole world, not just the Asia region in and, in and of itself, to, to form and develop a new urban paradigm which faces up to those you know, myriad of issues that, that are, are kind of facing cities both here uh, and, and worldwide. For the new cities, I think the most important solution is integrated planning to look at transportation, how to integrate public transportation with housing, with shopping, with other, um, other forms of uh, planners to integrate, to bring all the people together who have to uh, design a city and talk to the people who are going to live there to make, it, um, to make it work for them. There are other projects, other buildings, uh, which one can find sprouting up in Chinese cities, in Singapore, in Tokyo. Mixed-use projects which stack various uses on top of each other, plug them into each other, and the tremendous efficiencies there that result that can help, can, can uh, lead somebody to make the decision not to drive to work, but uh, to take uh, a train, or to say, if you take a train, there will be a place to work here. In America, we have these cities already built uh, in this infrastructure, which is all automobile-based. So our opportunities are more limited than the cities that in uh, Asia. And so I would say, before building that road, the municipalities have to think what are the true alternatives of that road. I think the key thing is you want to be able to create communities for people in cities. Even if they are really large cities, if you don't have a community where people feel comfortable being, living, working, then, then the city itself will fail. It's, I think city development to some extent is also a societal development and that's the responsibility that cities have. What's needed are, are strong governments that are uh, less responsive to the uh, short-term interest of, of the populations or the short-term interest of business moguls that um, have perhaps too much influence on government decision making so that the, the city and regional and national governments can say what do we need to do not for the next election cycle but what do we need to do to think about how to increase the welfare of our society 50 years out. I think that this initiative represents a new way of thinking about uh, the challenges associated with urbanization in, in, in Asia. Um, there are, of course, many, many individual professional dialogues and debates that are occurring. Um, but increasingly we see that this topic of urbanization in Asia is even bigger than 
just identifying professional practices, uh, best best practices, and and so it's that spirit of rising to the challenge that uh, embodies what PCSI really is. And I think the challenge now is to create a an environment in the future that's both livable and sustainable, and that's going to be the interesting, uh, I think, the interesting challenge for the next generation.